He is, of course, Jackson Hinkle. Welcome back, Jackson. So good to see you. Uh, we've just spoken to Anya Parampil. Get some of the, uh, the big stuff out into the open. I want to ask you the big question that's on my mind. What did Nancy Pelosi mean when she stood behind uh, Donald, uh, Donald Biden uh, rubbing her knuckles together? What's that all about? I don't know what that's all about. I saw that uh, video too. I was watching the State of the Union live. And uh, for someone who's accusing Vladimir Putin of having long COVID symptoms or <laughs> mental health decline, uh, I, I, I'm a bit confused as to why she's uh, throwing stones in a glass house because uh, he was in the middle of a sentence when, when she was doing that. And I, I remember just watching it and I was shocked. I was like, what? What is going on? She's not even clapping. She's rubbing her, her fist together. It was so weird. Well, I, I'm glad you've, you've clarified that because, you know, we are two peoples divided by a common language. I thought that it was some new Americanism that we'd all have to learn as a sort of non-macho way of clapping or something. Or, I mean, if I were being unkind, uh, perhaps it was, you know, the mimicking coitus. That's... That's what some dirty minds might think, though I'm sure that neither of them are involved in much coitus these days. Uh, but talking of mental illness, um, President Biden actually said uh, that Putin may be able to encircle Kiev, but he'll never win the hearts of the Iranian people. What did he mean by that? Well, I think uh, Joe Biden is waging so many regime change operations, wars, coups, launching sanctions in so many different countries. He's probably just lost track of, you know, who he's talking about in the given moment. I mean, this is a guy who has been known to be uh, chief among the warmongers in Washington, D.C. Uh, for the past 40 plus years. So given that, I mean, you, you have to understand the guy. He, he's got a lot going on. He's, he's got to remember which coup he's waging and which one he's talking about at any given moment. So he, he probably just got a little bit mixed up in, in the heat of the moment. You know, he's talking in front of the world and uh, you know, he, he forgot which coup he was talking about. What was funny was uh, the vice president, soon to be president, Al Warrant, uh, who was sitting behind him, and she was like a ventriloquist dummy. She was trying to throw the right words at uh, poor old Joe. Did you see that? I did. I did. Yeah. She was trying to like, right when she heard him say Iranians in Ukraine, uh, she, she was like, she's like, Ukrainians, Ukraine. She was trying to help him out, but there's no <laughs> helping Joe Biden. I no. mean, uh, we, we see what's happening to him every day. The American public understands that he is not only a weak leader, but he is in serious mental health decline. And, uh, you know, it's it's a sad state of affairs. His approval ratings are very low. And you can see that uh, with those low approval ratings and with an empire in decline, uh, he's resorting to very, very dangerous policy actions like, uh, for example, um, you know, uh, demanding that. Uh, Zelensky of Ukraine do not uh, negotiate these peace proposals with Vladimir Putin in good faith. It's dangerous uh, indeed. I commend this latest article in the Daily Mail to you uh, by uh, a very considerable military expert who basically tells us uh, that it, they're all lying to you, uh, that uh, this cannot end uh, in any kind of victory for Zelensky. So why are you giving more and more and more powerful weapons and uh, essentially seeking to fight to the last drop of Ukrainian blood? Uh, so dangerous indeed. But I wanted to ask you, Jackson, I think you're the man to ask this. In Britain, there's very little opposition uh, to this. It will grow. Uh, when the bills start coming in. Uh, but uh, I'm not kidding myself that uh, a majority or even a substantial minority of my own compatriots agree with me on this. But I get the feeling that there's more opposition in the United States than there is in Britain and maybe elsewhere in Europe too. I'm seeing figures, you know, on the right 
uh, like uh, Tucker Carlson, for example, like Candace Owens, uh, and uh, others that you might say vaguely of the Trump uh, persuasion, though not Trump himself, at least not yet. Uh, that's a significant section of the American population. Am I misreading that? You're not misreading that. In fact, Trump's base, which was, uh, you know, primarily uh, made up of uh, notably uneducated uh, white college males, in a poll that was released just yesterday, uh, the majority of them that were polled say that they do not support the U.S. intervening in this conflict between Russia and Ukraine at the moment. So, no, you're not mistaken uh, in, in making that assessment. And I'm seeing more and more people as the impacts of this conflict hit home in America, uh, you know, speak out against what is going on. They, the American people want peace. Uh, they want peace between Russia and Ukraine. And we all know that the only way that that's going to happen is if Ukraine guarantees to neutrality, removes foreign weaponry from their country and stops the slaughtering of civilians in Donetsk and Luhansk. Uh, but What's really, really interesting is just yesterday I was driving around. I live in downtown Los Angeles. Gas prices are soaring here. Six dollars and 45 cents, I believe it was, at the pump at my nearest gas station. There's no way that, you know, these implications continue to uh, be exacerbated here in the United States. Uh, and we continue to see efforts from Congress and the White House to send billions and billions and billions of dollars uh, to the Ukrainian military, which is filled with neo-Nazis, and not have the American public speak out, not be outraged. We are going to see more of this in the coming uh, days and weeks and months, um, assuming this uh, conflict doesn't come to an end. And uh, I think that American politicians should be worried because as of right now, they have the fog of war to protect them. But that's only going to last so long. Yes, uh, the fog of war is, of course, uh, thick, but it eventually clears. Uh, it clears when all the things that you predicted and said uh, turn out to be false. Uh, it, it clears when the fake videos and pictures that you're publishing uh, get debunked. I saw one uh, today uh, of a building on fire in Belgrade in 1999, uh, depicted as being in Kiev in 2022. They forget that we can search uh, these pictures. The Russian general whose death was announced with full panoply is alive and kicking. Uh, the ghost pilot and so on. Uh, all these lies are being more and more quickly debunked. And uh, a war which you said Russia was losing, it is in fact winning. So, you know, facts will eventually intrude and push their way through that fog, won't they? They definitely will, you know. Um, and the biggest lie of all that's been told throughout this entire, uh, you know, conflict is that Russia started this whole mess. That couldn't be further from the truth. Like Putin or don't like him, he's been very restrained over the past eight years in particular since the U.S. helped lead a coup against the democratically elected government in Ukraine. In fact, Putin even at multiple occasions tried to bring peace to the region uh, through adherence of the Minsk Accords. That's something that, the Ukra that Ukraine and the United States didn't want to have happen because they knew that it would be an end to the arms flow uh, into Ukraine. They knew it would mean an end of their puppet government in Ukraine being uh, weaponized against Russia and so on and so forth. So uh, I'm very worried about the uh, future of this conflict because, again, if not now, when we see that civilian casualties are taking place in Ukraine, if not over the past eight years, when the U.S. and uh, the Ukrainian military were using uh, Ukrainian people as cannon fodder, when will the Ukrainian government and when will the U.S. and allied powers across uh, the West decide that, yes, peace is more worthwhile uh, than the continuation of this conflict? for, say, more, uh, you know, more control over Ukraine right on Russia's doorstep. Well, I wouldn't hold my breath uh, for that, Jackson. Uh, it's my uh, advice from an old man to a young one, uh, because uh, that might never come. Uh, lastly, if, if I may, uh, 
Are there, how many American people, to what extent are the American people aware of just how personal Ukraine is for the upper ranks, echelons of the Democratic Party in America? How many people know that the Biden family themselves have made a fortune out of Ukrainian business? How many people know that uh, Cabinet Secretary uh, John Kerry's stepson is making a fortune out of, uh, of Ukraine? How, how do, do people know uh, that the Democrats are up to the neck in the corrupt oligarchy in Kiev? I think a lot of people are aware of this, especially uh, Republicans and independent voters here in the United States, because we saw the corruption on full display when it was made public that, uh, you know, Joe Biden's son got a job at Burisma, I believe it was $80,000 a month. Yeah. And he has no qualifications to work at this uh, natural gas firm he was working at, the Ukrainian natural gas firm. And um, when Biden was pressed about, you know, how is it that your son got this job? He said, well, he's a smart guy and didn't really have anything else to say. It was clear corruption. It was exposed by the press. Uh, we also know that Victoria Nuland was deeply involved in the overthrow of the democratically elected government. Jeffrey Piat, uh, you know, Chris Murphy, list goes on and on. John McCain. Uh, the American public understands what is going on here. Uh, the question is whether or not they will be able to see through, again, this fog of war that is telling them right now that the number one priority they should have is uh, an ending to the Rus Russian escalation which I would argue is the only thing that, unfortunately, at this point in time, uh, can possibly bring about peace, given the fact that, again, there have been peace negotiations led by Russia uh, for almost a decade now, and that's gotten us nowhere as of yet. Jackson, I predict that your uh, show uh, will continue to grow and grow, the dive, uh, because it's, it's more and more important at times like this that independent voices are... Heard. So I wish you the very best. I urge everyone uh, to look at the show. And once they've looked at it once, you'll go back for more. Jackson Hinkle, thanks for joining us.